All right, welcome back to Mr. P Helps with Calculus. This is Unit 1, Day Number 4, which we are doing a circuit activity with limits. So basically, we're practicing the things that we have done in the last few lessons, and we're going to start off with a warm-up that you see with complex fractions. So you would multiply both sides by the opposite denominator. Multiply this side by x plus 1 over x plus 1, and I'll show you what this answer looks like in just a second on the next page. And you're going to multiply this side by 3 over 3. And that way you're making the denominators the same so that you can make that um, two different parts into one uh, one part, basically. So you cannot subtract things that don't have the same denominator. So you're changing it to make both of these two terms have the exact same denominator. That's the whole point before you're going to leave change change with the rest of the complex fraction. So same steps as I just wrote. Remember, you're using limit notation all the way to the very end until you substitute that 2 in. But you have to get rid of the hole before you can do the substitution. Otherwise, you're going to get an indeterminate solution, meaning 0 over 0, which does not make sense. All right, so we are, once again, we're going to see some complex fraction questions, and we're going to see some conjugate questions. We start with a question that's very similar to the warm-up. So we're multiplying both of these pieces by the other denominator. Multiplying this side by 2 plus x and multiplying this side by 2 over 2. And that made the denominators the same, so which means I can now subtract the numerators. And once I do that, then I can use leave change change. I can reduce diagonally by crossing out the x's. That's the indeterminate. And then I can plug 0 in for x and solve. Over here, we have a conjugate question. So when you're doing a conjugate, we have two, we have a binomial. It's got to have either addition or subtraction in between. And you're going to use the conjugate, which means you're going to use the opposite. If this is minus, this is going to be plus. And you're going to multiply both the top and the bottom by the same thing. So we do the FOIL method. First times first is just going to give us x plus 3. Last times last is just going to give us 3. Because root 3 times root 3, well, that's just root 3 squared. And square root and squared are inverses. And then the outers and inners will cancel. If you go back to that lesson, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in that video's lesson. And in the bottom, you don't do anything because once you do this, you're going to be able to cross out the x's because the two 3's cancel out. And then you can plug in 0 and solve. All right. Uh, so here we have a question of, well, does it have really either method we just talked about? Basically, all you have to do here is just factor it. Now, these can be tricky because this is x cubed, and that's something you don't see a whole lot. But yes, if this is a minus sign, technically you have your differences of cubes, which is that formula that you see right here. So you really just keep it as is, and then it's all pluses on the other side. Um, so that's just the format. So it's going to be, you know, whatever this number is, cubic root of this, cubic root of this goes here. And then once again, you put the x squared in your x and whatever the cubic root of this number goes right here. All right. Um, and once you've got it down to here, you can see the x minus 1 can be canceled out. And then everything goes smoothly going forward just the same. Because once you've gotten rid of the x minus 1, then you can start plugging 1 in and solve for your answer. All right. Over here, we're going to just obviously just factor. Just simple. This is kind of an easiest question we've done so far. So this can be factored to this, and then we got rid of the y plus 3, and then boom, we can just plug in our 2 and solve and evaluate it. All right, so for this question, when I look at this table, what I'm noticing is that these numbers are getting closer and closer. to. Um, so these numbers are below 2, and these numbers are above 2. And then for both ways, they are getting closer and closer to 2. Now the point is, now what is this value right here? They didn't give us any of these answers. They just said A, B, C, D, E, F. And we're supposed to find out what goes in this dash right here. What goes, uh, filling in the table above, what value would you take the place of E? Um, take the place of E. Well, basically, these numbers are all going to be pretty much exactly the same thing because they should be getting closer and closer and closer to some sort of number. So we're trying to find that number in between. We're trying to find the limit as x approaches 2. If I plug 2 in here, it's going to be an indeterminate solution. You're going to get 0 over 0, which cannot be done. There will be a shortcut that you will learn later on, but you don't know about L'Hopital just yet. Um, so without knowing that, I can factor the bottom. So once I factor the bottom, I get to this. I can cross out the whole one. I just have this and then plug 2 in and solve, and you get your 1 fourth. All right, over here, once again, I can't just plug negative 2 in. It won't work. I can once again, oh, this is a cubed differences of squares, but it's got plus and not minus. So it's it's got a slightly different format. So if you ever forget that, you can always look it up. Well, that's what it turns into. So this turns into this when you factor it. And then you've got an x plus 2 on top and bottom. You can cancel those out and plug in your negative 2 in for a and evaluate. And there's your answer. 
All right, for this question, well, we have four-thirds power. Well, you should know that anytime you have something to a, to a power like this, it's always root over index. And what that basically means is that this is really like x minus 5 to the fourth power, but third root. And this is x minus 5 to the fourth power, third root. So it's root over index. Index is, you know, just like square root, but it's not necessarily going to be a 2. So square root is just an index of 2. So it means what times itself two times, or what times itself three times in this example gives us this. All right, so in this case, we can just plug away. We actually don't need to do anything else. We just plug negative three in here and solve and get our answer. Over here, we've got ourselves a question that kind of looks like this is going to be a conjugate question. And it's going to be a conjugate question because of this square root. That's what, probably going to be the easiest strategy to solve this. If this is minus, this is plus. And then same thing I've done in the past. So we have s minus 16 can be crossed off from top and bottom. And then you can just plug in your 16 and find your limits. All right, so for the next question, uh, it looks like I could just multiply this times this and this times this. Um, that could have been a strategy. Remember, trying to find this x approaches negative one-third. But I guess I don't really need to do that. I could just leave it as it is. And uh, like I said, you could do what I just said a second ago, but you don't necessarily have to. Just plug away. Just take this, substitute it in for x, and evaluate it. And you can see all my work right there. I'm really just plugging away by substituting which is kind of the easiest strategy if it's available. I know I don't have to worry about indeterminate solutions in this case because there's nothing over, there's no denominator, okay? You can never divide by zero. That's the reason why you have those indeterminate solutions. All right, over here, so we're going to plug away again. Put 3 in for theta and plug away. 3 minus 3 is 0, square root of 0 is 0. Pretty easy question. Uh, for this question, well, the first thing I'm going to do is simplify it. 3 plus h squared turns into this. And I showed you that trick in a couple of videos ago. Then you notice the two 9s can cancel out, and then you can factor out the h out of the numerator, and then you can obviously get rid of it because it's a product on top and bottom. And then you can just plug away, substitute your 0 in, and solve. Over here, we got differences of squares. Again, now, first thing I would do is I would flip this order around. So we really have negative x squared plus 1. But then that can be changed by factoring out the GCF to really negative 1 times x squared minus 1. So this turns to this, which turns to this. And once you have it to this, then you could change it to this, which, honestly, you can already see the work down here. So it's negative 1 times this times this, and then these cancels. So there's your whole gone. Don't have to worry about any tournament solutions anymore. Just plug your negative 1 in and solve. Uh, I guess I'm realizing I really needed a negative 1 down here, didn't I? Uh, let me just double check to make sure I did not to mess this up. Because this turns into this. I feel like my notes might have been wrong. It's a good thing I'm double checking myself here. Then this turns into this. Yeah, I'm missing the negative 1. I guess I saw the x approaching negative 1. thought that was the same thing, but it's not. So this negative 1 needs to be down here. So technically, if I fix this, this is here. Um, technically, if I fix this, I guess this is here. So I'm guessing the answer should have been negative 1 half. Now that I'm going through and checking it myself again. All right, that's why you should always double check your work. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.